There's been a lot of discussion recently on my feed about how you insulate under a suspended floor and John's made a model so I can show you. If you live in a house that's built before 1930 you've probably got a suspended floor over a subfloor void so in our house the void was about this depth and then rather alarmingly it's just earth <laughs> underneath that. So the joists go across and then hold the floorboards in this direction. One of the things to be conscious of is that the joists will all be quite higgledy-piggledy. There won't be set distances. You won't just be able to put easy insulation in. You'll have to measure each one because each one will vary and they'll have bits jutting out. So there's quite a lot to measuring them all. But this is the system that John worked out and then we discovered it is actually the right way to do it, which was very gratifying. So this is an air tightness, breathable membrane. So I know that sounds contradictory, but you need to keep it all airtight because insulation without air tightness still amazingly lets drafts through. But also if you're in a house with a suspended floor, it will be a house built with a breathable system. So you need to have breathable materials. And breathability means that the vapour needs to be able to pass through everything. So there's a constant flow of vapour and you don't end up with damp and condensation. So you take the breathable membrane and you uh, put it over the joists. Now, of course, you must never, ever cover the air bricks. So what John worked out was he had his system of little pieces of wood that are the right, this is the depth between the top of the air brick and the joist. So you would put that in uh, to work out what height he needed the air tightness membrane to sit at. So I always thought of it's a bit like a sling or a saddle and it's there to hold in the insulation. So you put your air tightness membrane across and we just clipped it down with a staple gun. Then you cut, you measure each one and you cut your insulation to fit. So we used uh, wood fibre. This is Pavaflex, a wood fibre. And you can see that it's much narrower at this end than the other. So that goes in, into the sling. And we use two level, two layers of that. So you end up at the end of the day with just about 100 mil. Now the beauty of a flexible insulation like this is that like I've just done there, you can make it really tight and you can shove it in. So that means you're getting as little air coming through as possible. Just while we're here, let me show you, this is one of the reasons why using PIR this is, um, apart from the fact that it's petrochemical based, so it's really bad for the environment, but it's very difficult to fit into these spaces and to make sure that you're absolutely airtight. So in order to do this, John's had to cut it about. This is just to show you. And you've got big gaps here uh, where you don't have there. So it's always better to use a flexible, sustainable material under the floor. Once you've got that in, then you put another air tightness membrane across the top and you seal it. If this is our wall, you seal it with, uh, this is Contiga tape. I'll put all of the products in the thing, uh, the comment below. This seals it. It's really, really sticky and quite difficult to work with, but it makes a really good airtight seal between the floor and the wall. And if you've got joining points of your air tightness membrane, put more Contiga tape on so everything is sealed tight. Then you put on your floorboards and on top of that you put your skirting board back and there you are. A beautifully insulated floor which will be saving you, I think it's in the region of 25% of your heat is going out through the floors.